reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by His blood, will we be saved through Him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by His life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading on this All Souls Day is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We have been reflecting on hope, hope of eternal life, hope of the resurrection. In the first reading, the question, is there anything after death? And the answer of the letter of the book of wisdom is, yes, there is. There is hope filled with immortality, especially those who have lived their lives here on earth in communion with God, living by the law of God, living by the justice, truth, and love of God. So here on earth, you already have a taste of immortality. And what is that? Living in God, communion with God. And so even if you're afflicted here on earth and you are subjected to a humiliating death, well, the world may say, your life ended in misery, but no, it ended in peace, peace with God. Now, some people might ask, is there a point to hope? Many people have hoped for so many things, but ended up being disappointed. That's a good question. Can we still continue hoping? Well, let me remind you, as I have already in the past, let us make a distinction between hoping and wishing. We have so many wishes in life, and not all the wishes really come true. But hope is something different. And when we're talking about eternal life, when we're talking about immortality, not only for ourselves, but for our loved ones, the departed, whom we remember today, that is not just wishing something good for them. It is really hoping, hoping in God that God may grant them eternal life and may grant to them the gift of the resurrection from the dead. Now, hoping in God, that's the point hoping in God. And St. Paul tells us, if we hope in God, we will never be deceived. If we place our hopes in human beings, oh, chances are you would be deceived. I don't want to give examples, but look in your lives. If you place your hope in money, in power, in human beings who can manipulate you, there is despair. There is the possibility of deception and disappointment. But, according to St. Paul, if you hope in God, there will be no deception. And God has already manifested to us that we can rely on Him. How? According to St. Paul, even when we were sinners... Even, we were, even when we were far away from God, even when we chose 
to be contrary to God, God never wavered in loving us. God even sent His Son to save us. Jesus died for all of us, even for those who do not deserve His love. St. Paul seems to be telling us, you still doubt? Do you still doubt that we can hope in God? Try to look, try to remember, try to look at what God has done to assure us that even our greatest sin will not prevent Him from loving us. It is the love of God, firm, constant, reliable, that is the source of our hope. God will never abandon us. And so, will God abandon us in death to nothingness? No, no. That is not His desire. His desire is His risen Son might heal us, might reconcile us, might save us, so that like Him, we could have a taste of the resurrection. Let us believe, for our God is dependable. Our hope is in Him.